Die hele land het vroeger hierdie week jeugdag gevier, maar na al die herdenkings bly die probleme wat die Suid-Afrikaanse jeug in die gezicht staar steeds achter. Is daar minder geleentheid vir die jeug van vandag? Wat is hulle grootste probleme en uitdagings? Hoe kan hierdie strijkelblokke uit die weg geruim word? Ons het hier vandag in die atelier kenders wat vir ons verskillende perspektiewe op hierdie vraag en die antwoorde op hierdie vraag kan bied. Ons verwelkom Lerato Meloy, die navorsingshoof by die Suid-Afrikaanse Instituut vir Rasseverhoudinge. Ook Sjaal Oberholse, die nationale voorzitter van Afriforum Jeug en Jovan Pienaert, die voorzitter van die uitvoerende raad van die Suid-Afrikaanse Nationale Jeugliga of die South African National Youth League. Vandaag is het debat gaan in Engels gevoer word, maar Sjaal en Jovan gaan met ons gesels in Afrikaans. So, Lerata, I'll start with you. Compared to the 1976 generation, it feels like they all had something to fight for. Is our youth of today still full of goals and full of ambition, are they as kind of pa passionate about South Africa? Um, I mean, I was chatting to my fellow panelists earlier about how um, the, the distinction between the 1976 youth and the youth of today is one that's made quite often. I don't know if it's a fair one. Um, the 1976 youth faced huge um, challenges. We still have challenges today and I think our biggest challenge is the education system um, but we also should be living in a government that's able to provide these things. So um, it's apples and pears in a way and I think because we are living in a democracy where the government should be able to provide certain things for the youth of today, um, the, the, the passion to fight for these things isn't yeah. there as much as it was back in the day. Yeah, but are we providing these things? It seems like education is still quite an issue these days. There are textbooks, there are kids that arrive at varsity that are not adequately educated, so to say. Are we still having a 1976 of our own in terms of education, Jovan? Well, I think something very important for us all to, to understand is that the struggle between 1976 youth and the youth of today are two vast differences. Um, yes, we understand that the youth of today are still struggling. There are still uh, certain things that are of a big concern to us, such as, um, as you've mentioned, education and such. But I think that the, the struggle of before and the struggle of today in respect to education are two different things. Yeah. In the past, we were, we were uh, focusing on unjust education and, and perhaps the thing of racial inequality. And today we're having an issue where the top government are failing our youth in, in, in providing the adequate uh, education. So I think that it, there's a vast difference that we need to understand first. Yeah. So? <laughs> I think that is a serious problem. As a three quart of the young people who are in one year, make it grade 12 clear. We have one of the greatest education in the world, the percentage of the world. We have one of the weakest education systems. So the money is not the problem. Angie Mochek is the problem. We must recognize that we don't have a good education system as Angie Mochek is Minister of Basis Education. You spoke earlier actually about, oh, and you also brought it up, Jovan, about um, the, the state of the nation. And do you think that if, if the youth got more politically involved, that it would make a bigger difference? Or do you think they're just apathetic? Um, strangely enough, we did a, an analysis of voters the other day at the Institute of Race Relations. We were looking at the number of eligible voters in each age bracket and um, the number of registered voters. Yeah. And it was very interesting to see that as you go up the age brackets, more people who are eligible to vote are registered to vote, um, which suggests that there does seem to be some sort of apathy where voting is involved. Other people, you know, not everyone who is registered can vote, so yeah. we're not saying that all the 50-year-olds that are registered to vote actually do vote. But registering is kind of the first step into the process. And um, people aged between 18 and 24 um, have the least proportions of registered voters in the country, yeah. suggesting that um, the youth of today just aren't interested in the political sphere at all. Who come think I said, sir? Lerati, heel eerstens, um, echt, excuse me, I'm, I'm going to continue in Afrikaans. Yes. Um, die, die, die belangrijkste ding is wat ons moet verstaan, je vraag of, of jeug uh, politisch bet betrokken is, die is daar. Ek voel dat jeug wordt word politisch gemanipuleerd. Um, ons, ons leiders van vandaag wat, 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 wat in die politieke positie staan, om besluiten te kan neem, om uh, sekere dingen te doen, om diensten te kan leveren voor ons gemeenschap, zowel als ons jeug. Manipuleer die jeug met, met uh, onvervulde beloftes, Om zeker te maken dat wat hulle vir die kan sê, klink goed. Om basis mense te oortuig om een kruisie te gaan trek by een naam wat hy dink vir om die beste toekomst gaan skep. Yeah. So tot en met ons ons politieke leiders kry, om op een leens te vertel, om op een beloftes te kan maak vir hulle nie kan vervul nie, kan ons nie seker maak dat die jeug is in die positie om die rechte besluit te maak nie. Tot die jeug kan focus op die problemen wat er erg. Hulle self in die gezicht staan soos, um, soos jy gesê het, uh, 
uh, unemployment, uh, je weet, uh, onderwijs en dat type van story. Voel ik niet dat dat jeug um, moet niet zo so makkelijk krijgen gaan trekken. Alleen moet ingelig worden over wat die, 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 die consequenties is van, van alle acties. Ja, zo wil je bijvoegen bij Ja, maar anders bij een raad toe. Um, die OVK had ook een cijfer uitgebracht wat sê 59% van jong mensen stel niet belang in politiek nie. So dit wijst, jong mensen willen hulle zelf op andere manieren uitdruk. Hulle ja. raak betrokken bij burgerlijke organisaties, hulle druk hulle zelf uit op sociale media. So hulle is teleergesteld in politieke leiderschap, beide wit en zwart jeug. Uh, zwart jeug grootliks omdat die ANC die, die land slecht bestuur. Uh, jong wit is omdat hulle ouders uh, baie apathies is, hulle self verwijder het eindelijk van die politieke omgeving na 94, so hulle soek ander manier om hulle self uit te druk en dit is eindelijk opwindend. Ja. Uh, politiek is nie die oplossing nie, uh, buiten politiek, burgerlijke samenleving, dit is waar jong mense een uh, groter verskil kan maak. Ja. But unemployment is a great challenge facing the youth of today, do you think that's contributing to why people aren't involved? Um, I think, I mean, unemployment since 1994 has gone up by 108%. This is the expanded definition that includes people who are sitting at home and not necessarily actively looking for a job, but would be available for a job. And if it's you're looking at the, just the official definition where people are actively seeking employment, it's gone up by close to 128%, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, I mean, this is not just something that's affecting the youth, it's affecting the country as a whole. Yeah. Um, but there don't seem to be any interventions for youth in the um, again, I was chatting to my panelist earlier about how um, our welfare system, not that I'm purporting for a welfare system because we need to get people to be able to stand on their own feet, but our welfare system concentrates on children and older people and dis disabled people as the vulnerable group in society. And we need to start waking up to the fact that there's a huge number of young people sitting at home with nothing to do with an yeah. inadequate education. They're unable to take this up further and they're unable to get employment and it's like many people have described it a ticking time bomb. Who can we see this trickle-block of youth worklessness overcome? Well, it's important. First of all, I think one of our major concerns, um, you were talking about Mr. Vavi, who said it's, it's, a, it's a ticking time bomb. Mm. Well, then you bring in uh, labor unions which force upon the labor uh, uh, sector things like uh, a minimum wage, forcing larger companies to, 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 to make use of smaller yeah. amount of staff for, for, for pushing up to the salary uh, requirements. So I think he, he had no position in making such a statement if he is one of the reasons where the unemployment rate is of such high percentage. So you, can't, you cannot force certain things on, the, on the, 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 the labor market and still try and explain and complain about uh, unemployment rates. Yeah. It's just unacceptable. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I think not that it's so important waarde skep nie. Jy moet waarde skep. Jong mense moet waarde kan toevoeg tot die ekonomie. Um, dit gaan nie soveel oor werkloosheid nie, maar aanstelbaarheid. Kan een jong mens waarde toevoeg in die werkplek? Het hy die vaardighede? Ja. Het hy een kwalificatie of skaarsvaardigheid? Um, en dit is wat jong mense moet begin doen. En natuurlijk entrepreneurskap is die toekomst. Dit is waar ons werkelijke groot invloed kan hee. Um, kleine medium maatskapie op hierdie stadium is verantwoordelijk vir 9 miljoen werke in Zuid-Afrika. 60% maak het op van die Brito Binnen Product. So dit is een reese area waar, waar, waar ek denk werkloosheid aan um, werkelijke knou kan kry. Yeah. Very well said. One of the major challenges that's facing this generation more so than a previous generation is the HIV AIDS infection rate. What is to be done about that and is it just something that they, the youth can be quite hopeless about? Um, it is a concern for the youth. There was a survey done in 2010 asking the youth what they're most um, concerned about. And they mentioned three things overwhelmingly compared to the other things. And it was HIV, unemployment, and um, education, so having access to education. Um, and in the same time, we did a, a project looking at why there's a family breakdown and why the youth seem to be lost, so to speak. And what we found is that the breakdown of the family, where 40% of South African children um, live in absent father homes, where their dads aren't necessarily dead, but they're just not active in their lives, um, has contributed to the youth acting out in specific ways. Yeah. So for boys, for example, they, they, they exhibit hyper-masculine behavior, but for girls in particular, they suffer from low self-esteem, are more likely to engage in sex at a younger age, you know, have um, bear children out of marriage and are more likely to get divorced. So I think we need to stop looking at the youth in isolation. Um, we, we, we are part of family structures, we are part of a society, and like I said, the youth aren't being treated as a vulnerable group of society and are kind of left in a silo to deal with their yeah. own problems. Granted, we should take some initiative, but I think as a whole, more needs to be done to support the youth. Yeah. Sure.
Ja, <coughs> Statistiek Zuid-Afrika had ook gesê, je weet, twee uit elke drie jong mense word groot zonder een uh, pa wat betrokken is. Dit speelt een race rol. En ik denk dit vloeit oor in goeders soos dwelm, soos um, so, vroege swangerskappe. Dus ik denk families banden wat disintegreer, dit is een kerndeel van, van jong mensen. dit is die hele waardesysteem van die familie, van die samenleving, en dit zien ons in misdaad, dit is deel van een machtdoemprobleem, so ek denk om daar die familiebande sterk te hou en om te focus op, op, op een waardestelsel, eerder als op wette, uh, dit is, is ook een betere optie. Ja, en Jovan? Well, it's, it is very simple to say that yes, HIV and AIDS is, is, is a worrying factor when it comes down to our youth. But then when, when we also sit with the, with the parliamentary system where bills are passed, where, where young girls, I mean, starting the teenage life, are allowed to have abortions or, 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 or enter into sexual activities without the consent of their parents. Mm -hmm. How can you complain yet again about certain statistics of, of HIV and AIDS that, that certainly influences, uh, influences uh, our youth? When, when, when these bills are passed without really taking our youth uh, in, in consideration. That is one thing that's a main concern for me. Yeah. I think we need to look, we need to look further uh, when, when discussing such points. And I think senior officials yeah. need to start taking the, uh, the, the youth um, uh, in, yeah. in consideration when making uh, such decisions. As I can for example, can you miss in South Africa? You can pornography kijk eerst als je 18 jaar oud is, maar je kan abortie krijgen als je 12 jaar oud is. Exactly. And it's illegal to have sex under the age of 16. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's there's a lot that still needs to be considered and a lot still that needs to be discussed. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Thank you very much, Lorat Uba. Thank you, Juvan, and thank you, Shaw. We tell you what we've done. Thank you to all our panel leaders. It was in a learsome gesprek, and we're going to have more of that over the Come on, so we have all the young people in the land, land. Een zwakkerige koude front skier zuid van die land voorbij en zorg voor rien bij langs die weskus en aan grenzen in binnenland, wat dan later vanavond zal in beweeg langs die tuinroute. Een hoogtrek gecentreerd wordt die vrijstaat.